Yes. So you said you remind me verse five, the Nor do beings dwell in me. Verse 5. Behold my divine yoga, bringing forth and supporting beings. Myself does not dwell in them. So he is making contradicting statements. And remember the truth can be taught only through this method. Through contradicting statements alone, truth can be explained. Because truth is full. Full means it, in, it includes both. Right. Only then it is complete. Otherwise it is incomplete. So if you have to understand the whole, you need to understand both sides. Together you have to understand. Our problem is we expect a consistent statement. Remember, consistency is the mark of ignorance. Inconsistency is equal to wisdom. And again, you need to understand what is inconsistency. Right? Not in the sense what, what in, uh, you know, inconsistency that we have, right? Now you'll say, ah, correct, sir. We are not consistent. Therefore, don't say, no, we are all very wise people. That's a mark of, you know, contradiction. That is why we don't go near a wise man. See, very difficult to be, to be close with a wise man because there's only two, two chances are there. When you are living very close with a wise person, person, only two chances. Either you switch off, right? You, you, you become numb, or you go mad. It's the only option. Because you will find so much of you know contradictions in them. Very difficult to take it. Because he is living in the present. Wise man lives in the present. Now, we don't know what is present. For us, present is a myth. For him, it's a reality. So, when they live, when they speak, you will find a lot of contradictions. Same person asking, 10 different persons asking same question. Same question asked by 10 different fellows. He will give 10 different answers. Right. If you are close with him, you know, you listen to all that, you will be totally lost. And the same fellow asking same question. 
10 different times, he will give 10 different answers. He will never repeat. Say, I remember, bro, I asked him, for some Swamiji, Swamiji, you only said, He will reply, I, I got a heart attack. I said, uh huh? Now, not now, I'm training now, long back. First, you know, in the very initial stage of, you know, encounter at that time. How, how you only said, I must have been drunk. Listen to me now. And the, you know, the fellow didn't know what to do, and I didn't know what to do actually. So. Now, after ten, you know, ten days, my my doubt was not this problem. My problem was, after ten days, if I go back to him, what is he going to say? The instruction that he gave now, he will say what? This is what life is. See. Because by that time, 10 days passed, the water has flown so much in the river. See, that's what the saying goes. You can't step into the same river. Because by the time you put the first leg and take the second leg and put inside, the river has changed. It's not the same river. The swimming pool same. There is no problem. Say water. Nothing happens. But in the river, it's not the case. It keeps flowing. It keeps moving, keeps moving, keeps moving. And they take what is the current situation. Now, we don't consider it. That's why we find a lot of contradictions in their teachings, advices, instructions and all that. Very difficult. Remember this. And because of these two reasons, you will find contradictions in a wise man's statements. That's why everyone can take a saying, Krishna is promoting only that. Krishna is speaking for Karma Yoga. Is there. Krishna is standing for Bhakti. There. Krishna is standing for Jnana. There. Krishna is standing for yoga there. You, know, you say anything, he is saying, that's it. At the same time, what is he standing for? Nothing. That's why Krishna is such a complicated one. Nothing complicated actually. We complicated. Why? Because we can't accept contradictions. We expect, you know, consistency. Say one thing, that's all. And keep saying the same thing. The same thing you have to say. Then it is correct. Teaching cannot be done like that. Particularly when it comes to the truth. Because truth can never be described or defined. You can't define it. What is it? Because it is beyond your conception. But at the same time, it can be indicated. How, how that indicate, indication is given through contradicting statements. So then we have to apply ourselves and find out. Figure out. Then it will start making sense. That's where these masters come and help us. You know, if they're explanation. If they explain, it becomes a little easier for us to understand. Now he makes statements. All beings dwell in me. I do not dwell in them. Not two beings dwell in me. Behold my yoga maya. Bringing forth and supporting beings, myself does not dwell in them. 
the statements you can understand with the with some sort of application see is about 10 kg of clay okay 10 kg clay is there using that 10 kg clay you have made 20 pots wait half a kg you take and make 20 pots different shapes different sizes now uh, 20 pots are there or even if you say you take it as same shape also doesn't make a difference there are 20 pots there now imagine clay is speaking to you imagination is needed how can I, how clear last the uh, base on okay put it okay clay is speaking now is all the pots are in me and i am the supporter of all the pots if i don't support Parts cannot exist. Right. So the first thing it says is all parts are in me. Which means what does that statement mean? Clay is there, parts are there. Correct. Clay says all parts exist, which means it is acknowledging the existence of a part. So, parts do exist, right? Also, it says those parts are existing. I am also existing. Parts are existing. I am also existing. So, first thing it says is parts exist, I exist. Second statement it says is I am not in parts. Parts are in me, but I am not in parts. Now, what is he saying? Parts are there. I am not in parts now. See, the first one is without clay, parts cannot exist. Right. Now it says, the pots are there, but I am not there. I am not in the pots. So don't search for me in the pots. Now what is I am not. Myself does not dwell in them. I am not in them. Nor do beings dwell in me. First he said, parts are there, I am there, I am the supporter. I support it. Suddenly he says, in the next verse, he says, myself does not dwell in them, nor do beings dwell in me. <laughs> now, how are we to understand that? He says, myself does not dwell in them. What he means is, for a clay to be a clay, it is not dependent on the pot. A pot to be a pot, it is dependent on clay. Right? But a clay for its existence need not be dependent on the existence of a pot. Otherwise, what will happen? You destroy the pot, you have to conclude what? Clay is destroyed. Is that correct? No, no. That's what he is saying next. Now the clay says, look here man, for my existence, 
I am not dependent on the existence of thought. So first, thought exists. Second one, he says, I am not dependent on the thought to exist. My existence is independent of the thought's existence. The third thing he says, I've got nothing to do with the thoughts. Why? A 10 kg clay remains as 10 kg clay, isn't it? Nothing has happened. All that has come in this what now? The 10 kg clay has got converted itself into what? Has it got converted? Actually, nothing. Anything got added to that pot? Nothing. What is it? It is just a insubstantial thing called name and form. We have started giving it a, a name and a form. That's about it. But the 10 kg clay remains as 10 kg. That has not changed. So the material has never got any addition by making those pots. By destroying the pots also, it has not got deleted. Isn't it? That's what we do. Ganesh Chaturthi. Have you have done that? We bring Ganesha, no? Very interesting. We make that Ganesha. You do the puja. Next day, what do you do? Throw that fellow. People think, you know, it's not funny. It's not a custom. Durga puja also they do. The same one. Make huge, huge ones they prepare. They do 10 days puja, they do. 11th day, what do you do? Now it looks really sad to see. And these people make fun also with that. Look at this. Yesterday you are doing puja, today you are breaking. Some of them will take, because it's so heavy, you, know, you can't carry them. So they have to take in a crane. And they try to submerge it, it is not submerging. So what to do now? So the fellows will climb over that and smash it, break it into pieces. And most of our fellows don't, don't understand. What are we doing? Forget about the fellow who is doing himself may not know. What is he doing actually? From where they had this custom? Why, why do you have to do that? You made that Ganesha. You brought that Ganesha. You are doing puja. No, keep it. No. You say what? No, no, no. Why? I need an idol to focus because without that idol, I have no capacity to invoke divinity. Right. Invoke the divinity, which is everywhere. I don't have the capacity to see it everywhere. You can say, you know, you know, they say, God is nowhere. Now that English teacher came and he changed it. What is that? God is now here. And gimmicks. You see, do you see divinity everywhere? That is the point. You don't see it. You don't have the capacity to see it. So, you have to Take something from where you will take. The only option we have is what? World. You have to take it from the world of, world of elements only. Isn't it? World of elements means what? Panchabudas. Air. Sorry. Space. Air. Fire. 
what are earth. You have to take something from there only. There's no option you have. So we take from the world and make a idol out of it, invoke. In that process of the puja, I had developed that capacity in me to get the glimpse of the divinity. Once I get the glimpse of the divinity, I have the ability now to invoke the divinity inside me without any aid. Right. After that, what do you do with that idol? Hmm? I wanted to go out. I don't have a car. Hey, I ask you. So can you leave, can I take your car? I have to finish this work and come back. And you say risky only. But to do what? Okay, take. You give the car to me. I take the car. Finish the job. What am I supposed to do after I finish the job? Return it, no? I'm supposed to return it to the owner. That's what we do. You have used it. Now what are you supposed to do? Return back to the earth. Let that element merge with the elements. That's what we do here. I have followed that, no idea. You should need something, no, from there. So you take that clay and you make four Ganesha out of that clay. What has changed? As far as the clay is concerned, what has changed? Nothing has changed. Clay is remaining as clay only. You may call it as Ganesha, you may call it as is that, uh, that Gauri. There's another one they keep, no? Gauri also. Both, you know, mother, son, both will be returned. Amazing, you know, system that is. The problem is you don't know why you are bringing. What you are supposed to do with that also, you don't know. And then, why you are working, that also we don't know. But my point is, does it matter? Even if you don't know, continue. After 500 years, one fellow will understand what? This is the, this is what we are supposed to do. This is what we are doing. Till then, you have to continue. But as far as the clay is concerned, has anything changed? What is what is added to that now? To the clay? You have added only insubstantial name, inconsequential form, as far as the clay is concerned. The clay is, I don't care. All that you have added is what? Just a name, just a form. Does it make any difference as far as I am concerned. Therefore, it says, pots are not in me. Because if pots were to be inherently existing always with the clay, wherever clay is, there will be pot, 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 pot. Everywhere pot will be there. He says, no, no. Then what is pot? This is the purpose. The whole thing is what's up. Purpose is, then what is pot? What is Ganesha then? Just a name, just a form. Just a name. You, you call it as, it's the same lump of, you know, clay only. If you see those people making it, it's so interesting. The same thing, you'll pick up one and put it to one casting. They have. And press it, press it, press it, press it, press it. And then take it out. Ganesha, he will give. Same thing you will take, put inside, and press it, press it, press it, and say this is glory. What glory? What? Both are what? 
clay. Then what is Gauri? What is Ganesha? Nama Rupa. Therefore, what is spot? What is Ganesha? What is Gauri? All this is what? Mithya. That's all. All this is what? The, just an appearance. Just an appearance. That's about it. The pots are just an appearance. There is just an appearance. Only you know, dismantling what is what you will get there. Only clay. You will not find Ganesha inside. You search in, inside the pot. What do you see? Just a name, the form. It's just a mitya. Oh, clay and pot. What is the relationship between clay and pot? Is the same relationship, he says, between God and world. Jagat and Ishwara. Brahman. What is the connection between the two? All that you apply here, you can apply it. There's no additions, no deletions. Nothing has happened as far as the thought is concerned. Then you start applying it to Jagat. Same rules. God says, world exists in me. Which means, he is acknowledging the existence of the world. World is also there. God is also there. That's the starting point. The starting point is what? Acknowledge the fact. Exactly like you acknowledge the fact to that boy who comes screaming, there is snake, snake, snake. You say what? Okay. I acknowledge the fact that there is a snake. Let us investigate. Come, let's go and see. You know. But for you to start, the fact that you are going along with him to see, even though you know very well there is no snake. Right. You know there is no snake. There is only rope. You know that. But the fact that you are going, for what you are going, not for your sake, you are going for his sake. Which means, as far as the boy is concerned, what have you, what have you done? Step one. The first step, you have acknowledged the existence of the snake. Similarly, Krishna also is accepting the existence of the world. Also, parallelly, there is an existence of God. World is also there. God is also there. But then, world is dependent. God is independent. Swatantra and Paratantra. Paratantra means dependent. Swatantra means independent. Right. That is also truth. You can't say it is not. At that stage, correct. But is it complete, sir? No, no, no. Why, Why Krishna is confusing all this is because he has already told Arjuna that I am going to give Jnana Vijnana Sakitam. It said in the first verse. I am going to give this knowledge together with wisdom. So which means he is going to give complete knowledge. He's not just going to give only one aspect of it. He says, one first, one aspect is this. That is also there. Same way, he says, in the next step is this. Next step, he says, the, don't try to think that I am in pots. I am not. I am not in the world. Why? Because if the world goes, I will also go. The world disappears, I will also disappear. It is no, no, no. World disappear doesn't mean I disappear. I still exist in my independent glory. Two. This is the Swatantra Paratantra state. 
First is they are they do exist. Acknowledgement of the two. Then the second one is this. The third one is where he comes and says that they says the parts are mithya appearance superimposed illusory. You see, it doesn't have that. In reality, it doesn't exist. Because by adding 20 parts, you have not added anything to the clay. The 10 kg clay remains 10 kg only. A 10 kg clay doesn't suddenly become a 15, nor does it become 25. It remains the same. That's what he says. The pots are there in me. So what is pot? Pots are there, pots are there, pots are there. We say, no. What is a pot? Pot is a name for a particular form of a clay. Name you have given to a clay in a particular form. Ganesha. What is Ganesha? A particular form you make in the clay and call that as Ganesha. Sir, in our house we made plastopyris Ganesha. I am talking about clay Ganesha. Okay. This is another problem. One <laughs> fellow said, God works like petrol in car. I have diesel car. <laughs> I have a bullock cart. Another fellow will come. So, in this context, we don't say Ganesha is clay. Okay. Context I'm explaining. Because just happened. Day before. Day, day before now. Day before. Ganesha. Tomorrow we are supposed to go on the bus. Three days. One day for Sattva, Rajas Tamas. Friends and all that. Three days. Guna Atita will become. So tomorrow all of you will become Guna Atita. Mithya, just a name, just a form. Same way, what is world? <clears throat> just a name and a form. There's nothing added, nothing reduced. The rope says, snake, poison, cannot poison me. It's not possible. Why? Because snake is just a name, a form. You have given it a name and form, but by you giving it a name and form, you are not adding any weight to it. There is no weightage, there is no reality to it. Therefore, Mithya. That is why we say Satya, the truth, reality, has three aspects. There are three types, you know, three di di dimensions to reality. First dimension of reality is Sat, exists. Exact opposite of that is Asat, doesn't exist. Asat is something which doesn't exist. Like we say, you know, examples say, horns of a man. Or the, you know, rabbit. Rabbit's horn. There is no possibility of having a horn for it. But sentence wise correct. Horns of a rabbit. Correct sentence. Grammatically correct. But can you bring it into reality? Not possible. Therefore, that is called as which doesn't exist at all. Then there is something in between, which cannot be called as Sat, cannot be called as Asat also. It is neither Sat nor Asat. 
What is that now? That's called Mithya. So all that he is explaining here is the Mithya nature of the world and the Nirguna Swarupa of Brahma. So what is explained? Verse 4 and 5 explains this. And that's why he calls the whole thing how that possibility of a pot emerging from clay and the relationship between pot and clay, he calls that as divine Maya, <clears throat> divine yoga, he says. It's a divine yoga. Yoga Maishwara. How is it possible for these two things to get united? Yoga is union. Divine. Why it is divine? Because it is uniting with divinity. Therefore, this also becomes divine. So the world also becomes divine. How the world is divine? Not because there is there is divinity inherent in the world. It is divine because it is united with divinity. How that union can happen? Miracle. How this meeting point of finite and infinite? It's like the meeting point of day and night. Miraculous one. That's why they use that period for worship. For worshipping, for any spiritual union or efforts. It is, is to be used because of that union. It's like Mr. Darkness and Mr. Sun meeting. Shaking hands. Welcome. Mr. Darkness shakes Mr. Sun. It's light. It's welcome, man. And Mr. Light shakes hands with Mr. Darkness. Welcome. Evening. That period is the most ideal period for us to realize. So, therefore, verse 4 and 5 is meant for contemplation. Tomba. These two verses are meant for contemplation. To contemplate on that. Bring forth. You break one pot, you make another pot. You destroy that and make another. Usually make another. Like these kids nowadays, they have no? make me <coughs> the clay they have no? Do the same thing. They'll make it, take it out, destroy that, and bring another shape. And then destroy that and bring another shape. Another shape. Another shape. Another shape. Another shape. Another shape. It goes on and on and on and on and on. That union is what we say. And that's what he means by bring forth and supporting things. I bring forth. All that is coming because I allow that to be. If I start resisting it, nothing can happen. Okay. So the whole discussion is from the material cause. Okay. Padanaka. God is the material on which the world is created. So what is the relationship between cause and effect? The Karana Karya. What is the cause? What is the effect? And basic rule is, is this. The effect is dependent on the cause, whereas the cause is not dependent on the effect. It's the basic rule of cause and effect. Or you may say, this is the cause, this is an effect. The effect will be dependent. A cause cannot be dependent on it. A child is dependent on the parents for its existence. The parent is not dependent on the child for their existence. Because much before the child could come about, parents were existing. No? So who is dependent? Who is independent? Cause 
effect. This is the relationship. The effect is dependent on the cause. Never the cause is dependent on the effect. And the relationship between God and world is this cause and effect relationship. Behold my divine yoga. That's the best part. So how is it united? How is it possible for these two fellows to meet? Fascinating to think. Verse 6. As the mighty wind moving everywhere rests ever in space, even so, know that all beings rest in me. Now, once he gave that pure idea, he knows fully well that Arjuna wouldn't have been able to comprehend. So, he gives one example. So, from the example, he can understand something. It just gives that Upama comparison. Like this, but he's not explaining. He only says, like this, that. Now, what is to be compared with these two need to be worked by Arjuna only. Krishna has not explained. As the mighty wind ever rests on space, they also rest. That's all. Now, what is the connection between space and air? You have to understand. This is where we need to have these two things are there. Now, that's the event. When there are two things parallelly existing, right? Only two chances are there. There are two things. Space, air. Both are there. So, first let's take these two things only. Then, apply to the world and God. Now, for two things were to be existing together, right? Invariably, the possibility of connection is there. Association is there, isn't it? There is an association. There is a link. Right. Just now he had said divine yoga. Right. In this verse, he is explaining the divine yoga. What is so great about it? You will understand now. Right. So you will say, uh, yeah, what is there? Is there? Uh, all right, eh? Simple. What is your problem, man? No, it is so amazing to see. Why? Huh? These two things are existing. When two things are existing, invariably there will be a, a relationship. But there is no connection. There is a relationship, but there is no connection. See, the moment they are there means that Sangam will happen. No, association will come, and isn't it? How can two things exist parallelly at the same time? Asangatwa. How, how is it possible? Isn't it? You're all with me. We are having, you know, living together for the last, you know, 50 years, marriage. But there's no connection between them. <laughs> hmm. Something like that. But we are very closer. You know? Now, one 
can't be without the other. They are like that uh, couple. Call them as other set of books. Right? Wow, so close. But at the same time, what's that? Oh, it gives a very fascinating example. From where he got like that, when he's speaking. What amount of wisdom he must have had. Because remember, it is a continuous conversation. It's not that Krishna is sitting, thinking, come back next week, you know, so find some time. Because sometimes if I don't know, I have to pass, you know, we have to think. No time at all for him for all that. Just goes. How much he must have had inside the depth of understanding. Therefore, we say what? Krishna also must have been a Because we can't get They are together, but at the same time, there is Asangatva. Like what? He gives the example. And best thing is, space, air, is both can never be segregated. You know that? Try to vacuum a room. Try to vacuum, you know, one, one small area. You know, the amount of effort we have to put in to vacuum that place. I am not about vacuum cleaning. And the dust. We are talking about actually vacuuming, taking out air from that place. Is almost an impossible task. You know, they say you can never do it. You know, theoretically only possible. Practically, you can never do this. You will be there. Some something will be there. You know, fascinating things to see. Which means they are almost inseparable. That's why he takes that example of space and air. <laughs> You know, as I said, you know, space and the water also, same thing, no difference. Space and fire. But he says he chooses these two to give that example. Now we have to think. We have to detect and find out okay, two things are existing. But when those two things were existing together, as closely associated with each other, almost inseparable, but no connection. This doesn't have any connection to that. That's what space and air is. Why the contamination of the air we superimpose on space? A dirty place, space, a filthy space, smell. The smell is not in the space, the smell is where? The full smell is where? The air or the auspicious fragrance or a pleasant fragrance. That is also there, air only. Air has found, air has possibly, but space doesn't have. But you cannot segregate the two. That is why the contamination here or the purity here, the pleasantness here gets superimposed on space, even though that has nothing to do with it. Because they are together. But at the same time, are they together? No, they are not together. Totally unconnected. Why? Example you understand. But we should know the theory behind it, no theorem behind it, the principle behind it. Why they are not? Oh, here both are there, no? 
stick to only this example now, because he has given only that. Now we can't change. Previous verse we can change because he has not given anything. Since Krishna has not given any example, we can give our own example. One class I will say, rope and snake. Another class I will say, clay and pot. I can play around. Now he has given space, air. Now we cannot change. Now we can't bring our own things. That we are, uh, we are not following him. We are going and running in you know, a parallel track. Exactly. One scenario is if those two things can exist together, but if one were to be subtle, the other is gross. One is perceptible, another one is imperceptible. Air is perceptible. Remember. You know that. You can perceive air. Perception doesn't mean only seeing. Right. In English language they say, but philosophy, perception means what? Tasting is also perception. Air can be felt. So therefore what? It is perceptible. Space, how can you perceive space? Space, what happens? It's just there. It's vacuum. It is almost space exists, but you can't define it. You can't have a connection with that. You can't visualize. You can't re register anything when it comes to space. Why? Because space is the first element which is closest to Brahman. Therefore, it has more properties of Brahman. Very close. It's like an iron piece very close to the magnetic field. It also has a magnetism with that. No, same way. Lucky. It also gets that magnetic field. Similarly, space is the first element. Right. This side Brahman, this side world. Uh, first is space. So, the line between Brahman the world, first thing comes out is space. So, lot of properties of Brahman you will find in space. After that, slowly properties starts reducing. See? Reduce, 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 reduce. And further it goes, as it went. Right. Space, you can't perceive. Air is perceptible. You can register. You can understand. It's too windy, you know. You can register. There's no air, man. Switch on the fan. You can do that because you register. Now with space, what can you do? Too much of space. Eh? Too much of space. That means say only after we the process. Yeah, too much of space. Too much of space. Where is too much of space? It's so interesting. Eh? Yes. Uh, couple after a wedding, you know, we went for uh, honeymoon. We are standing in the bus, uh, we are trying to catch a bus to go to the next place. The uh, first bus came, so much of a crowd. Let this go, let go to the next bus. He said, okay. And we are waiting for another half an hour, next bus came. More crowd. I said, we wait, next bus will go. 
that I do about three, four buses, we just stop. And finally, she said, you keep the things. I will go and get the seat. And the bus came, suddenly she disappeared. And suddenly from inside the bus, she called, come, come. And then our officer, after that, you know, I went and, and you know, put the luggage and I sat down. And it is supposed to be two seater. We took that seat. I was sitting there and she was sitting there. Yeah. Suddenly I found, you know, a man standing. Both of them. I said, Karan, have space, come, you also sit. Why? There's a gap of four inches gap between me and my wife. That four inch gap was what? Too much of a space. <laughs> so what to do now? I mean, suddenly you become so charitable. You know? I said, please come with. You should get up and give that display. That will not do. I said, ah, now nah, you go and sit. And then that bus journey was, you know, present journey. <laughs> <laughs> space. Now, you say too much of space. See, it is all what? It's subjective. There's no reality to it. You see, you can't give that because you can't define it. Which is more space, which is less space. There are people who will say this is too small. Yeah, how much in the can we do? They come and say, you know, some of them say the house is too big. Oh, no. How can you do in such a way? Don't you get scared? Hello, girls. You know, we went to a house. How many stay? His room. We were literally walking for five minutes inside the room. Huh? Seriously, the room size was this hall. The total, the take off this wall and all that, no? There, in the center, they have that, you know, rotating uh, uh, cart or bit, rotating one. And on top, you know, they have some, you know, ceiling decorations and all that. I said, after you fall off the steam, what difference does it make? You know? That house, I tell you, unbelievable. We went not to see Swamiji. Yeah. We just joined there. Otherwise, there's no chance of entering the house. They will not allow us to enter the house also. Huge. You know, some say, hey, at night I get scared. Because you say, you know, they get a heart attack. By the time I call these people, they climb the steps and come over. I would have been <laughs> dead by then. Because, I don't know why they built such a big place. You could have made a partition and made seven rooms in this. Yeah. One person calls that as you know, minimum you need know that space for you to have. Huge spaces. Some of them say space is undefinable. Other things are perceptible. So wherever perceptible and imperceptible, they may exist. But there is no relationship together. Similarly, they may exist together, but there is no relationship between Satya and Mithya. That also exists, but there is no Sangha, there is no association, there is no attachment, that is what it means. There's no attachment. So for us, the moment we come in contact with something, instantly we get attached. He says, perennially these two things are existing together, but there is no attachment whatsoever. So first thing that we understand from this example is, they do exist together, but there is no attachment. There's no association. There's not attachment. Or you can put it like this, but, but, better. Association is there, but no attachment. They are together, but 
there is no attachment and between the two if you take that satya vidya this one is the dimension of one can exist without the other <laughs> that's why satya vidya also needed see because perceptible and imperceptible can be in totally different things one is perceptible another one is imperceptible sir so there is no connection between the two right there is the idea of the real and unreal and in the sense with the illusion okay the real and unreal what is that unreal cannot exist without the support of the same way air cannot exist without the support of space whereas space that is not dependent on the air for its existence two points is the key first basic idea of relationship aspect then comes the dimension of space and air what is the relationship between space and air same thing like what we did for uh, clay and pot same similar things you can project it for uh, what is it space and air also the space says since i am the real i accommodate all that i am all pervasive isn't it it accommodates air air accommodates fire fire accommodates water water accommodates earth so which means space accommodates everything which means space is all pervading with, with with reference to this in the in the in the in the limited sense in the example same rule is applied to the self also brahman brahman says god says i am all pervading that is the first thing point number 1 what we understand from space air example is i am pervasive now pervasiveness means what subtle anything that is subtle is more pervasive that's how we identify it is it earth is less pervasive than water then fire then air then space space is all pervasive why we say space is all pervasive because we don't know anything beyond space therefore we say so you know this is all pervasive similarly brahman is all beings rest in me therefore i am all pervasive i am all pervading because of this one two all objects are in me the work says the space all these objects that you guys are perceiving are all existing in me same way brahman says all that you are experiencing the waking dream and deep sleep states of existence and the respective worlds and the respective personalities all that is resting in me says brahman now exactly like how space speaks to the elements same way god is speaking with reference to distance even though all those things are in me i am not in them meaning i am not dependent on their existence for my existence my existence is independent of them so therefore they are not i am not in them 
I accommodate them, but I am not in them. There's all these objects are inside me only. They can no objects can be existing beyond me. Right? Because people say, after you know, fourth, maybe there is a fifth plane of consciousness. There is a fourth plane of consciousness. There is a fifth plane is there. Seventh plane is there. Eighth plane is there. He says what? Nothing exists beyond me. If, if you can see the sixth one, we'll say what? That is also inside me one. It is also there in me one. What about heaven? That's also in me. What about hell? That is also in me. Not only this world. All that things that you can conceive of beyond this universe. This everything is in me. And without my support, they cannot exist. They will simply disappear. Says Brahma. Not only I am just a supporter, I am the origin also for all those things. They dissolve it to me and I am the origin. The starting point for all this is me only. Says space. Same way Brahman says all this world not only supported by me, they emerge from me only. First thing came to space. No? After that, only all those things came. That's what he says. As the mighty wind moving everywhere, rests ever in space, even so know that all beings rest in me. The sun. Sarva Bhutani Kaunteya Dabhavinyanti Mavika Kalpakshaye Punastani Kalpano Visujamyaham Sarva Bhutani Kaunteya Dabhavinyanti Mavika Kalpakshaye Punastani Kalpano Visujamyaham O Kaunteya Another name of Arjuna. At the end of a kalpa, time cycle, all beings enter my prakriti, nature. At the beginning of a kalpa, I bring them forth again. Now, what we need to understand is, in Vedanta, Creation, resolution is cyclical. It's not a one-time affair. It's not that God created the world once. That's it. After that, you just keep on going. It's not linear. Like a calendar that we have, that is, a, you know, this uh, the 2012, no? They say, world is going to end. Why? Because that mind calendar is coming. Now here, every 60 years we change. The age calendar only keeps coming again and again. Because it is cyclic. You know, they understood everything is working in cyclic nature. It is just comes back, comes back, comes back. Again and again and again. So here, this creation and dissolution is happening time and again. There is nothing new here. Not that once, you know, the whole world will be destroyed. That's it. After that, nothing will be there. It's not like that. It will come back again. It comes back again. It comes back again. This is the rule here. Exactly like you sleep and you wake up. You go to sleep and you wake up. 
same way, God also goes to sleep and wakes up. God going to sleep is called destruction. God waking up is called creation. Creation, dissolution. Creation, dissolution. Waking, sleep. Waking, sleep. Waking, sleep. Waking, sleep. Waking, sleep. Waking, sleep. Waking. Goes on and on and on and on. Same way, here also it keeps going. So long as you are alive, you will be going through the phases of waking, sleeping, waking, sleeping, waking, sleeping. So long as God also existing, he will also go through the cycle of waking, sleeping, waking, sleeping, waking. Sleeping. When he wakes up, world gets created. When he sleeps, world is destroyed. So that is called as kalpa. Yes. One kalpa means that starting. We just uh, the full two positions of all this. Now we have seen this earlier. There is you know, divided into four yugas. Satya yuga, Kreta yuga, Dwapara yuga, Kali yuga. Uh, Kali Yuga's double is Treta Yuga. Sorry. Dwapara Yuga. Three times of Kali Yuga is Dwapara Yuga. Four times of Kali Yuga is Satya Yuga. So one plus two plus three plus four. So Kali Yuga is supposed to be 4.32 billion. So all the Yuga together, what is it? Add one more zero. Right. 4.32 billion that is. 4.32 billion becomes 4.32 billion. Right. That is known as Mahayuga. One Mahayuga. Right. Like that, one night also happens. Daytime is 12 hours, daytime is 12 hours. Same way he goes to sleep also. So that also you need to add. They are also same 12 hours now. So that period also gets added up. Another this period. What is it, sir? 4.32 billion. So one day is equal to 8.64 billion. That is known as one Mahayuga. Like that, they say. That is, is, you know, one full cycle. Thousand Mahayugas is equal to one Kalpa. Thousand Mahayugas has to pass through. That is one day for Brahma. One Kalpa is one day of Brahma. Just an exaggerate. Don't literally ask me how they got the calculation. We have no way to disprove it. Okay, it is not so. Since you cannot disprove it is, it is not so, we have to take it or leave it. That's all. Nothing else can be done. If you want to take it, take it. If you want to leave it, leave it. We don't care. If you ask me, I will take it. What will you do if it means I'll take it? Because all that which I can verify, all my very verifiable things that they have they have given are all correct. Anywhere I can apply myself and think and understand, all that has been correct. Now here I am not able to verify, I am not able to think, I am not able to understand. So, I have no justified reason for me to suspect it may not be the case. The rational also should be a justified reason. Reason. But the reasoning should be done just fully. Suppose if there is so much of, you know, wrong, so much of flaws, in the verifiable things, then non-verifiable you can doubt. All the verifiable things were all correct. Not able to 
find any flaw, any defect, logical or experiential, any ways. All that I can experience, all that I can logically conclude, everything is correct. Now, suddenly he is saying something which I am not able to verify, I am not able to experience, I am not able to understand logically. Therefore, what I am going to do? If you jump to conclusion, it must be wrong. Or simply he is talking. That shows you are not a thinker. See, that you are not a thinker. Thinking person will be thinking logic. Here what? All that I can check. I check correct. This I am not able to check. So the doubt has to be where? On him or on my capacity? The doubt has to be on my incapacitation. It is my incapacitation that I am not able to understand or I am not able to experience. I don't have the required skill with me, required equipments are there with, not with me. Therefore, I take what he says as correct. So, Galba means this. Now, suddenly don't try to bring it to our you know, calculations and things. He said, no, we don't. Because they give precision to go to. They have fixed the date also, you know. Galiba starting point. Friday. Day also they fix. Friday is not starting. Kaliyuga. Starting point is that. Friday. Dating with, with our current this one is. One kalpa. We don't understand. Doesn't matter. You understand that as a long period of time. That much if you can understand enough for our purpose. So all that he is saying is exactly like you go to sleep and you wake up, your personality goes to unmanifest state and manifestation happens. Same way macrocosmically also happens. So creation and dissolution is psychic. It repeats by itself. So the connection is what the beginning of Kalpa, I bring them forth. It goes and comes, it goes and comes, it goes and comes. So there is nothing to panic here. Do you all that is gone? Do you sun is dead, sun is dead. Sunset only has happened. Tomorrow morning it will come. Don't worry. He will come. You may not be there. That you can worry. Are you, if I, will I be there to see tomorrow sun? That you, you know, guarantee cannot be. But one thing is guaranteed. What? Sun will come. You may not wait. Sun will come. So that's what he is giving here. So, so Kaudeya, at the end of Kalpa, time cycle, which is the thousand Mahayuga, I bring forth. Then, all beings enter my Prakriti. At the end, when it goes to sleep, everything. That is personified as Brahma. That, that part, my nature, means my higher nature. It just gets at the whole thing. And then the whole thing comes out. The whole thing comes back again. That's the lower nature of it. So the lower thing gets into the higher, and again from the higher, lower, uh, lower keeps jumping up and down. Long happening again and again and again. So he says, I am the cause. So I am the Srishti Karta. And I am the substrata. Sthiti also happens because of And Lyam also happens. So I am the whole thing. The whole thing dissolves into my my nature. It's in that. 